this picture. It's of our energy and climate change minister, Chris Bowen, and it helps to explain why our electricity and gas supplies are now in huge trouble. But before I get to that picture, here's the bigger picture. It's hard to exaggerate how badly the Albanese government's plans are going to switch our electricity supply from coal, predominantly, to wind and solar. In fact, 82% renewable energy just seven years from now, to supposedly stop global warming. Now, the alarms about this are being sounded all over the place now. The latest just today, even the Victorian government, global warming extremes though they are, has just agreed to pay AGL to keep open the state's biggest coal-fired generator until 2035, if Australia has not yet developed enough renewables, which looks like being the case. And another alarm. The Australian energy market operator has tipped to release a report this week warning this transition to wind and solar is going so badly that we won't have the green power we need when the coal-fired generators are driven out of business. And a third warning today. The Business Council saying there are serious delays in building the new electricity grid, the green one, and the energy storage infrastructure, means the Snowy 2.0 project, that's two years late and counting. And it says some coal-fired generators indeed need to remain in service for longer than planned. And it's right, of course. One of the big problems is that the government, to, to meet its targets, just has to build an incredible 10,000 kilometres of transmission wires around the country in just seven years to hook up all the new wind and solar farms and batteries we need and shift power to where it's uh, lacking. And a lot of Australians are now furious at this rank vandalism of our landscape, and they're fighting back. They're holding things up, driving up costs. Now, I could point to even more warnings that the government's plans to cut our emissions are in real strife now, with some eastern states facing even higher power bills and possibly brownouts or blackouts in just a couple of years. Which is insane when you think about it. In a country with mountains of coal and oceans of gas and a third of the world's supplies of uranium, we're running short of power. If you're wondering how a country could be that dumb, I'm going to give you two examples now to show how crazily ideological this all is. First is a small but telling example that shows Chris Bowen again pushing schemes to cut emissions that obviously won't work, people obviously won't like. So let's go back to that picture of Bowen in the United States in front of a Ford F-150 electric ute, saying this is the kind of ute he wants Australians to drive. He tweeted, today I checked out the E-Ford 150, hugely popular in America, range around 500 kilometres, can tow boats and caravans, goes like you wouldn't believe, not currently available in Australia due, due to poor policies. And Bowen is now planning ways to fix that, make you buy more utes just like that instead of our hugely popular petrol-driven ones. Now, most motorists actually know this kind of electric ute is not the answer. And it's not just because that particular model costs $110,000 with that extended, extended range. And if you did tow anything big, its range would more than half to just 200 kilometres. <laughs> 200 before you need to charge again. And when you do need a refuel or recharge in a big wide land, you're in real trouble. As the head of Ford himself, Ford, which makes this you, the head of it was driving around two weeks ago, taking for a long trip. Guess what he found out? Charging has been pretty challenging. I stopped at one of the most popular charging uh, sites in the country on the I-5 in Kalinga, uh, a big Tesla um, supercharger network there. It took me about 40 minutes to get 40%, uh, uh, um, but it was a really good reality check, uh, the challenges of what our customers go through. Note that the wind turbines behind him weren't even moving. He had to get up at 3 a.m. to refill his, uh, recharge his car at one stage. 3 a.m. Great holiday. Now, that's the car that Chris Bowen was trying to sell you last year as a solution to global warming, even though it weighs an absolute ton and a half. Even the man that makes it says it's a real drag trying to charge it. But there's something even more concerning that shows you how ideology is now strangling us and how the voice of the parliament actually could make it much worse. This is not directly about our electricity supplies, although gas is going to become a very important fuel to get us through the transition, particularly when the coal-fired generators go. Last year, the federal court said no to Santos, opening a big new gas field in the Timor Sea north of Darwin. And that's because the 
left-wing judge, hadn't uh, said it, hadn't consulted the this particular traditional owner on Melville Island, which is more than 100 kilometres away from the edge of the gas field. Even though Santos had consulted the land council that covered the islands, right? Consulted the land council, oh, this guy said, no, but you didn't consult me. And now two more Aborigines, this time even further away, they're on Croker Island, they say they don't want the gas field either. And the Environmental Defender's Office, which is funded by the Albanese government, is backing them, backing a challenge from these two women, just two out of 300 islanders, who say they are against this Barossa gas development too. Development more than a, a thousand kilometres, a hundred kilometres over the horizon, because they say we have our rainbow serpent who protects us and our community. She cannot be disrupted or disturbed or harmed in any way. We live off the sea. How true that is, I don't know, but so we get two people a long, long way away from a project that's out at sea say they are against it because of the rainbow serpent. So is that really why we must lose the billions in royalties and this access to gas? And this is a claim supported by the Environmental Defenders Office that the Albanese government actually decided to fund again to do exactly this kind of thing, to use your taxes to strangle our energy supplies in the name of the rainbow serpent in this case. So are you surprised when we're now heading to deep trouble with our energy when reason is this dead?